What's going on, golf addicts? You are about to watch the HV3 interview. Oh, it's it was so good. It was just so good. We had him back on in 2018. That was the first time we had him on. So he's coming back on the show four years later, and he's dropping some bombs. We're talking about his relationship with Michael Jordan, his mentorship from Jordan around Live Golf. He talked about how the PGA Tour, DP World Tour, Live, caddies, fans, players – all come out on top and all win with all of the turmoil that surrounds professional golf. We had a stats conversation. If you're a better or DFS player in golf, you're going to listen to this stats conversation I had with HV3. It's going to blow your mind. We had some revelations. And he said the greatest thing that any tour player has ever said to us in an interview in seven years. We probably interviewed 50 players. He said the greatest thing. Like, I was beside myself. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Then we played a couple of fun games at the end. Rip my drip, open championship style, and know your tour pro. Uh, it was so much fun. HV3 was incredible. Listen, we put in a lot of work to make these videos happen. If you don't mind, like, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, please, and drop a comment. Your favorite part of the interview, whenever that happens, if it's when it's over, whatever, comment your favorite part and share the video with somebody. That helps us a lot. That's the greatest thing you can do for Tour Junkies is share it, tell somebody about it. We're going to keep pumping these out. More to come. Now, enjoy the interview with HV3. All right, Harold, this is weird, dude. Since we last interviewed you, which was a long time ago, you've turned Gosh, I was 30. thinking how I long ago that was. I'm about to tell you, you've turned 30, <laughs> you got married, you became a dad, all that good stuff. We last interviewed you in March of 2018, man. It's been that long. Golly, it has, hasn't it? Um, yeah. I literally thought it was sooner than that, but no. Uh, thanks for having me again. Uh, I'm glad this worked out. I'm terrible with these things, but uh, you guys have been, you know, obviously been around with me since the beginning, so always looking forward to it. Yeah, we appreciate it. So how is that? How has all that affected you, right? Like one of the things we talk about is strokes gain home life because – you know, we all know, like, you guys as tour players, if, if things are good at home, if things are good with the girlfriend, with the wife, not not both at the same time, with the kids, mm. you know, anything like that, you got some, you know, it, it affects your play. If it's bad, you're thinking about it on the course, all that stuff. Like, but how, going from a single dude, talking about your girlfriend last time we had you on, to now yeah. marry, family man, like, how has that affected your play, do you think? Well, it's helped my play, but – it's given, you know, it's just less time. I, I think it's helped because there's less time to do other stuff. Yeah. So um, I think people say they, I, now I get it. They play well when they have kids because there's only, two, there's only one option. Like, what do I need to do for this kid? And then like, whatever's left, I got to do, make the most of it. So it's been fun. Um, it's made life a lot of fun for sure. Uh, literally, I just fed him before you got on this, before I got on here, but it's been it's been fun. It's been stressful. Obviously, my wife's about to kill me right now because, like, the house look like a it looks like a bomb blew up in it. So it's it's uh it's interesting. That's for sure. It's all part of it, brother. It's all Can't part win of them all, right? Can't make everybody happy. Um, <laughs> Tell one me of the about things, it. I went back and listened to our episode, and one of the things that well, one thing that stuck out to me is how terrible of an interviewer I am. Hopefully, I get better this time. You said back in 2018, we asked you some of your favorite golf courses on tour. You said Riv. You said, this is funny, you were like, the one in Connecticut, I really like that one, but I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> and you said, and you said uh, Quail Hollow. So my question is, have, four years later, any changes to that list? Would you add any? Would you take any away? Um, Riviera is still number one. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hit or miss at TBC River Highland, so you know we have a love-hate relationship. You know, I like my scores this this year there um favorite course uh quails up there i mean i'm a little biased we yeah. you know i joined there and it's been been a great place for me um and then it's so close to home that was my always my thing like i'd never play well there but like when you get to play in front of your like friends and family you know like i grew up probably 30 minutes away so yeah i'm gonna stick to my guns i like those I'm trying yeah. to think, where have I played? Oh, I should say Hilton Head, but I hate that place. Okay, I want to ask you about Hilton Head. Before we get to man. that, though, tell me about Riv this year. Man. What happened at Riv? What did I do at Riv this year? You you trunk slammed, I I'll tell you that. But you also, it was like the worst. Oh, I'll tell you what year. happened. Uh, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, I'll tell you that I felt very uncomfortable you know, with everything going on with the live stuff, you know, and 
I had just won in Saudi. So like, I would think I had a, it was a little bit of having too much fun. We went to the Super Bowl, me and uh, five of my best friends. Um, obviously the waste management is a good time. So, you know, we, we had fun, but like, I just wasn't ready to not be liked for winning a golf tournament. And I, I've done such a better job of just not caring what people think. You know, I, I like to be liked. I think, you know, I, I think everyone does to some yeah. degree. Um, so it was just really odd that I had my biggest accomplishment ever in the strongest field and to be frowned upon for just going. Like I didn't, when I went over there, they were paying money and I was like, word, that's awesome. I'm going like, say less, I'll be there. Um, so it was sad. I was just very uncomfortable. I remember I putted awful. Man, what did I shoot? I shot a thousand now that I think about it. And then Phil came out with the thing. And I just I don't do well with drama. Like I'm very good if there's drama and like you and I have a problem where like, you know, we can just talk it out or we can you and I can figure it out. But whenever it's just like publicized just so you can get a click or you know, you know, I'm starting to learn that like sometimes when you just say you just be very transparent, you know, they'll burn you. Um, this year in Hilton Head, they asked me about Morgan Hoffman and it was just shocking how bad people are like at their job and they get paid a lot of money to, you know, they asked me, what did you think of Morgan? I was like, well, when I'm on the golf course, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to yeah. beat them. And they just took that and made it what they wanted. But like what I was trying to say is I really don't care what Morgan shoots. He's alive. He's about to have a kid, you know, like things that are just so much more important than if him and I, so it's been, yeah, I just wasn't ready for it at Riv. That's what happened, man. That's interesting. That, that kind of gets back into that strokes gain home life. I mean, it's not really your, it's not your wife and your kid that you're thinking about, but it's 100%. Like personal, it's personal life. And dude, it's, it's, this is also funny. So Riv was your statistically of all measured uh, tournaments on that you've had on the PGA Tour. It's your, it was your second worst iron play performance for those, for those two days. It was bad. Contact was bad. You gained strokes putting, and you just said I putted terrible. You gained, you gained two point three, you gained two point four strokes putting, one point two around the green, but you lost three off the tee and five point two on approach. I get, I mean, that is funny. I'm trying to think. I remember I hit it short of the bunker on sixteen. It's hard to do. Yeah, I mean, I hit it bad, but you know, like when you're, for for me, if I'm not making the cut, I always feel like I didn't putt well enough to like make the cut but i mean you just play solid you're just gonna you're gonna fly i i can it's just funny in 2018 i would just be thinking like man if i could just play good i'll just you know i'll get in there play the weekend now it's like how how well am i going to play like am i prepared to win have a chance to win what am i going to learn and you know yeah it's you know winning in saudi and doing all that just changing my whole outlook it's funny you Rev was a big week for me. I was tired. Yeah, I just wasn't capable enough to just tell people to fuck off. <laughs> yeah. So, you in know? other words, next year at Riv, we're not going to go like, we're not going to be looking at you and going, man, uh, he played so bad here last year. We should probably avoid him. No, nah, man, like, we're, we're going to be straightened out. Everything's going to be good. You're going to crush I, it at Riv. I love that place. You know what happens, though? It's the last event on the West Coast. So yeah. somehow I need to figure out like not to play so, like this year was a good idea. I didn't play Tory. Um, I guess we won't be going back to Saudi, you know, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'll, you know, I'll figure it out. But you, by the time you get to LA, you're like, bro, like, can I get home? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it is what it is. Um, Tigers made the event, you know, once he put his name on it, the strength of field just skyrocketed. So you got to, Got to play. And they're putting more money in it now. So you also – Crazy, ain't it? Yeah. You mentioned Heritage. Okay. I'll, this was a – hate that I, place. Okay. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you on asking, talking about this because, you know, you know that we we break down every tournament. We're, we're making picks. We're talking about players. And obviously, we look at course history. We look at recent form. We look at stats. We, you know, our gut. I'm always look. watching. Don't worry. Well, like, okay, so my question was take a look at Heritage, right? Your best finish there your first five years was a T-59 and a bunch of missed cuts. Then all of a sudden, a second Crazy. and a third. And so my question was, what what happened? Are you are you just a better golfer and that's what happened? Or did you figure something out about that place? But now you're telling me 
You're telling me after after a runner up and a third, I hate, you hate it. it. Man, I told people before I played this year, I hate it, man. It makes me so uncomfortable. Every shot. It's probably why I play well though, because like I end up paying playing way more conservatively. And then the shots that are easy around there, you have to be more aggressive. Like well, I guess they're not easy. Like number four, 13 going down the part three is it's either 14, uh, it might be 15. 15, like if the wind's off the right, like you 15, 16, no, 14. Yeah, if the wind's off the right, you really can't bail out. So like that excites me. You you're gonna you're gonna win the tournament off a good shot, not so much like you have to hold every putt. Yeah. Um so there's just a few shots out there where you're just like, hey man, I got it. Like, come on, let's go. You win or lose right there, I feel like. Is it a P die thing? Because like you also have had a couple really strong finishes with players. Yep. Um and I hate P die P die. I do courses. too, man. I man, they're so hard. hard. What's the what's the one? Uh it's on the front nine. The, I think it's on the front nine. The one that he let his wife design. Do you know that one? It's a absolute just bitch of a hole. And I'm not him. good with stories, but I've heard I heard I I know he she designed uh 17 at Sawgrass. No, it's not. It was. It's at Harbor Town. It is a horrible golf hole. Um, I mean, but every shot's like do or die. Yeah, I do. You know what I do like though? You get to play the Pete Dye courses uh, with overseed. When those courses get like really firm and like kind of into the grain, I think they're so much harder. And every time a PJ Tour event's there, it's overseeded. overseeded. So like, it's awesome. Um, so you also mentioned your win at Saudi. I was going to ask you drained like that massive putt. Unbelievable. You, you, you went, you had a great celebration. Love to see it. So I was going to ask, how was the celebration that night? You've alluded to it somewhat. And then my next question was what's mm. something interesting you purchased after you cashed that million dollar check? Um, did you have so, guys over there, like buddies over there to party with you that night? I, my best friend was there. And then my, obviously my caddy, uh, yeah, we went to Dubai. It was insane. It was uh, from the moment the putt went in till I got back to America. It was it, so much fun. <laughs> it's like uh, I mean, it didn't help my golf game. That's for sure. It but sounds like a, a hangover night in Bangkok on, on the movie or something. <sighs> it was rough, man. So, it was rough. I was I was very very like because I had never been to Dubai. So we go and you we stayed up. I mean, literally, till my plane took off. So when I got on the plane, I slept for like ten hours. It was unbelievable. It's uh, you know, those guys were great to me. I mean, the only thing you can wish for is it happened on the PJ Tour, just so people can shut up and be like, he's going to win on the PJ Tour. But it, <laughs> um, other than that, I couldn't have. I, I really can't think of a better way to win a golf tournament. Like, it was so good because it couldn't have happened to a better person. Like, me <laughs> and Bubba, like, I was, like it, it was personal. You know, like, that was awesome. That's cool. Yeah. So, at what point did you think about getting into the Masters after that? It was the only thing I thought about. I'd never, you know, I'd never played in it. Yeah. Um, I knew if I finished second, you, you know, I was going to move up enough to where I could have played my played solid and played my way in, and then freaking a, you know, like just gave me all the confidence in the world. You know, yeah, I didn't do well right after I won, and I we spoke on that. Um, but like once I got comfortable knowing that, like, fuck everybody, <laughs> yeah, like like people care about some things I really don't care about, and they that's their problem. Uh, my uh my job's not to care what they think you know because you you could sit here and say you don't care what people think but like that's that's a lie yeah that's a lie yeah, um, and what was my best purchase nothing man i don't really i like i buy stuff when i, I want it like i yeah. don't have many things that i like oh well, when i play well i'm going to buy this um i'm weirdly enough i'm oddly in the cars um, I have a 55 Chevrolet Bel Air and I've always wanted like a 1990, uh, Defender. Like, so I bought a 1993 Defender, mm. uh, but that, I just bought that probably four or five weeks ago and I'm just really pumped. And then my last car, I'm going to get a C10 short bed. I don't really like the step side. I think that looks terrible, but they're like so hard to find and then I'll be done. 
that'll be like the you know my dad had a 57 two 57s growing up and it was really hard to find those so i got a 55 defender i saw when i went to my first open and i was like i'm gonna get one of those and i just think the 69 c10 looks just looks badass honestly it, it won't be your last purchase. You'll get something. I like can't. It'd be my last car. I'm not in the cars. I like cars for people. Other people can drive them. Like I get in the 55 and I let other people drive and we just cruise around That's town. Cool. That's cool. I'll have to go for a ride for that sometime. We get up to Quill Hollow. Come on. Um, all right. So talk about, you know, we're here in Augusta, based in Augusta. Talk about your first master's experience. By the way, dude, I mean, a T23 in your first master's Man. is pretty. I shot every numbers. I shot in the 70s, shot in the 60s, shot in the 80s. <laughs> um man it was it was an unbelievable experience i i like to stay with people um it's pretty weird like uh, so i rented a house and my best friends came down we had i curious, mean we had curious. would you tell me what you paid for it i'm interested in this we fifteen thousand. Oh, okay that's not bad you, you must have i been... thought so i was on the if you pass you augusta country away. club yeah if, if you pass augusta country club and it's on your right you go to that next light. Yep. You take a right, and I was like, kind of down there on the left. Dang, you were that close. You only paid fifteen grand. Yeah, that's a yeah. solid. That's a solid deal. Anyway, um, so, but like you know, we had all these rain delays, and we we uh, so when they came down, it rained. When we just had, we played, we played black. I was house, and we played blackjack for like six hours. Man, Love we that. had a we had a great time. It was just, man, Saturday was just hard. Yeah. Um, just needed to play decent, like, and I just I didn't. It is what it is. Uh, but it was it was cool. It was, you know, it was any Augusta. like any like specific. I mean, obviously, you probably have you probably had a pinch me moment driving into Magnolia Lane or whatever. But any, anything other than that that was maybe subtle or something that you know people wouldn't expect. Um, what wouldn't expect. I think it's crazy how many people are there. I mean, the hospitality is second to none. Unbelievable. Um, I don't like hanging out at the golf course no matter where I play. So, you know, like going to the golf course and ha eating the pimento cheese sandwiches, like I could care less. Not my thing. Yeah. But for me, being the ultimate, like I want to compete. I want to walk these. I want to win. Yeah. That was cool. Like there's, there's so many shots where it's like, Come on, bro. You got you got to hit a good one. Like number twelve is just like that's my favorite golf hole in the world because even the best can get it wrong. You yeah. know, like we build these golf courses where the best players just get better on it. So like, yeah. you know, but like there, you can the best player in the world can screw that up. Um, so it's. I mean, yeah. Look what Si Wu did. He's the best player in the world. Look what happened, man. Here. Si Wu. Uh, we'll talk man. about him in a little bit. What? Uh... Yes, it was awesome, man. I just couldn't believe all this infrastructures and all this stuff, but it was, it was a great time, man. Uh, I made an Eagle, obviously Amanda caddying for me in the, yeah. In the part three was pretty cool. I mean, Liam has no clue, like, you know, you know, so it's pretty funny, yeah, but that's special. Um, what, what is, I mean, like talk about the golf course in terms of like your game. And so your future at Augusta, like I can win there. Yeah. You got, the you, you got, the you, yeah, you got, got, you got it. I got to hit one more fairway per round. Mm. You don't like really that. have to hit like, so like, I think the best, I think I'm at like in majors, I'm at like 52%. If I can get that to like 59, 60. Yeah. I think I have a really good chance. Like perfect example of the open this year. I missed the fairway on, it's when the pins were on the right on 17, mm -hmm. I hit the fairway. When the pins were on the left, I missed the fairway. Like, you know, if you could roll reverse them, you're Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. So it's thinking like that, I think I just gotta find a shot where I'm like, hey man, this is going this direction. And I, I for the most part I do, but like, you know, you know what I mean? You just gotta keep working and keep figuring out what makes the ball go where you want it to go. And I enjoy that part of it. Like I yeah. I just think the coolest thing for me is I'm just I mean, I was probably one of the shittiest putters statistically. Like, in my mind, I felt like I was one of the greatest putters, which, yeah, at times I was. But, like, now I'm not, like, a, as great of a putter when I'm, like, putting well. But, like, I'm way more solid than I've ever been. So The floor's, like, the floor's not as bad, huh? Yeah, exactly. So, 
it's just funny when people are talking about like, oh man, I just got to putt better. No, you just can't putt like shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So speaking of majors, next year, the U.S. opens at LA Country Club, right down the street from Riff. You are 125 to one right now to win at LA Country Club next year. Any thoughts the, on that place? Have you won or have you played there before? I've never played there. By the time I get there, my odds will be less. <laughs> I'm only trending. What about uh, so PGA Championships at Oak Hill in New York? Have you ever seen that place? You're 190 to one to win on the uh, to win the PGA Championship. I've never seen it, but like if they going back to the U.S. Open, if they set it up like they did. Boston Country Club or the Country Club. The Country Club, yeah. I like my chances a lot. Well, this year I had tonsillitis, so like, yeah, I was in ER every day, so that just sucked. Um, so it is what it is, and dude, I still get like my tonsils still get swollen like every every time I finish the antibiotic. So it's been, man, it's been crap, man. I, I you just take being healthy for granted sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I was reading a little bit about that last night, um, and I don't know we talked about you not know, feeling well a couple weeks ago, but hopefully you guys get that figured out. All right, golf addicts, we're going to get right back to the show here in just a second. But before we do, I got to remind you guys that the Nut Hut Discord server is where you can get VIP access to me, to Pat, to to Ben Little, to AC, the smartest Price Picks guy I know. All right, and all the the community that you could ever ask for is in that Discord server. We've had. Verified members win over $6 million in the Discord server since June of 2020. There's over 700 members in there right now, and it's $10 a month or $90 a year to get in it. Okay, There is a free version if you're already on Discord or if you want to set up your account and just check it out to see what it's all about. You can click in the description below and try the free version, but there's a lot of things hidden for you in the free version, like caddy info that we get from our friends on the course every single week that we pass along to you. I read every single interview and press transcript leading up to each golf tournament. I screenshot the stuff that you only need to know for betting or DFS, and I put that in the caddy info channel. Curate all that information so you don't have to. Our, our friend Caddy John, former PJ Tour caddy, is on there every single week giving his his thoughts, his breakdown on the golf course, and all the other stuff that you need. And the community is there. And listen, while there's a ton of golf information, we know that people love to bet and play DFS on other sports. So there's NBA threads, MLB, NFL, UFC. There's even a disc golf uh, guru in there, right? Helping people make a ton of money, you know, and it's just been a growing community. It's the best part of what we do. We don't charge our listeners, our followers, our readers, our email subs, anything for the content that we put out at tourjunkies.com. We usually put it all to the sponsors and advertisers. Everything we write on our website, none of it's behind a paywall. Our emails are obviously free. The only thing that you pay for directly to get access to with Tour Junkies is the Discord server, and it's the Nut Hut. So go to tourjunkies.com, click on Nut Hut, check it out. $10 a month, $90 a year. You can cancel at any time um, and just... Give it a shot. I promise you, you won't regret it. It's also the one place that you can get on Wednesday nights at around 8 39 p.m. Eastern for at least an hour, two, sometimes three. You get live chats with me, with Pat, with some other experts that we have on there weekly. That's where we can answer all your questions about whatever you're playing, whatever you're doing, whatever you're thinking in terms of golf betting and DFS, or sometimes we just chat about life in general. So it's a great community growing on Discord right now. And I know it could be intimidating if you've never done Discord, but trust me, it's easy once you get in there and get going. So check it out right now. Link in the description. And now back to the show. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, you've won, you've won the Australian PGA Championship. You won Saudi event this year. Before that, though, like, obviously you've had times where you've been in, you've been in contention, uh, you know, late on yeah. a Sunday. It didn't happen. And we talk about that a lot on our show, like especially for the young guys. Like I'm always saying – there's just certain guys. Now, I, I do think certain guys come out of the Corn Ferry Tour, or come out of college, and they're just they're they're world class players, and they're going to get it done on the first eventually, attempt. without but a most doubt. Of them, most of them don't, you know. Most of them don't get it done the first time they're in the fire late on a Sunday. So my Correct. question is, like, what do you, what is it that you actually learn or take away from being in contention late on a Sunday that then translates to success afterwards? Can you put your finger on what that is? Um, the best thing I've heard is just basically run your own course. I think when you first, first year, two years out there, you're so adamant about like keeping up with the Joneses. Like this guy's playing good. Why are you not playing good? This guy's winning. Why are you not winning? Um, mm. now I just do my thing. Like my time's coming. I believe it. And just like quiet the noise. Cause if you're like focused on what you need to do to get better, that gives you, gives you your best chance of winning. Um, 
Yeah, I've been there a few times, man, and it just sucks not getting it done. Um, I've had some – I mean, Colonial this year, that one hurt a little bit. Uh, yeah, it was hard. I just didn't didn't get it done. And, you know, like it's so easy to sit there and be like, man, Harold, you know, choke. Like, yeah, we, whatever you want to call it. For me, like I learned something from that. And, you know, the biggest thing for me is what I should have done is when Scott was getting the ruling, I should have went and putted instead of sitting there and waiting and mm. so like yeah whether i choked or wasn't focused or whatever it is i know it's best for me next time so i to me i think i actually learned a lot because what you're trying to do is learn enough to like win all the time yeah like you don't want to just be one and done i want to win and be like all right let's get on a roll yeah that's how golf is if you look at careers people win and then they go on this run for three or four years and then they get paid and then they whole cycle yeah yeah, and I'm cool with that cycle, and I feel like mine's coming. And it's not like I've played bad. I just haven't won. Yeah. It's just hard. Yep. All right, I want to do some fun stuff now. All right. All right, if you had a caddy for any player on the PGA Tour, who would it be and why? Scotty Scheffler, because the fucker's beating everyone's ass. I knew that's what you were going to say. That one was easy. Yeah. That was easy. This money. next one's a little harder. If another player had to caddy for you on the PGA Tour, who would that be and why? Bud Collie. But I don't know college. if we I don't know if we'd be on tour for long, but damn, we'd have the most fun, <laughs> dude. When Bud was out on tour, uh, you know, regularly, Pat, because we started doing this in 2015, it was like clockwork. Any if Bud Collie was in the field, it didn't matter what golf course we were at. It didn't matter if Bud Collie was in good form or not. Pat Perry, <laughs> whenever, whenever we got to his price range, Pat Perry was gonna be like, "Man, you know who I like this week? Bud Collie." And he'd be like, well, no shit, Sherlock. We we get it. <laughs> I mean, he he had some sort of affinity for Bud Colley. When, when Pat hears this, he's gonna be like, "Bud," you know. I mean, we, uh, he's one of my favorite man. He's about to have a kid. He's That's just great. awesome guy. That's great. All right, so when you're out on when you're out there and you get your pairing, who's your favorite caddy and player duo? So I mean, that's easy. Webb, Webb, and sorry. It's just so guys, easy, man. man. You can be like, you can be you around them. You know, you just go do your thing. I would say Webb, uh, Tyrrell Hatton would be fun. I've, I've, you know, Mick caddying for him. That, that's pretty funny. Yeah. Shane Lowry and yeah. Bo. Yeah, that's probably, that's not, that's probably, I mean, I've played with him, the, either him or Will. I've been paired with the most this year for some reason. I don't know why. Um, so I've gotten to know those guys a lot better. Uh, I love me some Will. Zalatoris? Yeah. I lo- I, so I would say Webb, Shane, Will. Who else did I name there? I already forgot. Those three Hatton's, would be – Hatton, uh, Hatton and- Oh, Hatton. Yeah. I can't tell if Hatton's being funny or he's actually mad. <laughs> yeah. You know, so that's what's kind of no, weird. So, I like, I just both. go ahead and laugh. I think it's yeah. Um, actually funny story. I actually saw, uh, like was it two or three years ago, uh, Hatton missed the cut at the masters and I was playing golf at my place at champions retreat. And like literally after he missed the cut, he came to champions retreat and he played like two groups behind me. And I had just seen him trunk slam like and get pissed and all this stuff. And I look over and I, two holes behind me on the tee box, he's hitting. And he hits a horrible drive, and he's just dog cussing himself up and down. I'm like, this dude left Augusta National thir- an hour ago, came here, and is still like just Hiss. hotter than a match head. You won't ever, ever see me going to play after. off. No, <laughs> ever. I'm I'm on the fastest, quickest trip home. You might see me play it. You know, if I play in the morning, Mr. Cut, come on. Yeah, maybe. I just don't miss that many cuts right now so that's right you don't what about all right just speaking of guys like Terrell Hatton who's in your mind who's the most electric player on the PGA Tour and I I feel like the definition golf wise or or uh no no like okay all right uh you just look at that guy like that 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 guy's electric you know it's like whatever that means it's like they're funny but they're also like unpredictable they're I mean Terrell would be number one man and I got to play with him Gosh, I don't know where I played with him, but it's been recent. And, like, he played so bad, and we were, like, trying not to laugh. My caddy used to caddy for him, so it's just, like, uh, it's even funnier because he knows, like, he'll be – like, my caddy be telling me, he's like, oh, he's about to have his head off. And I'm just like – so now I'm, like, glued in, like, oh, is he watch. really? Yeah. 
did he do anything or say anything that just made you laugh? No, I think he was over playing golf. Um, it was oh, yeah. in Canada. So I think he was just over it, to be honest with you. He got a couple over. He's like, all right, man. <laughs> I'm totally cool getting out of here. Um, all right. Well, I, I think from all we've witnessed ourselves and what we've heard, we think Siwoo Kim is a pretty electric character. Um, I mean, I have, you probably can't, see, well, you might be able to see it behind me, but if you look on top of that frame, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super stroke. The, is that, yeah, yeah. Is that one of his that's, putters? That's the top half of the putter he snapped on number tw- uh, 15, I think, at Augusta um, a couple years what ago. What a great possession you had right there. Dude, a listener, I don't know how, but a listener got it. And he DM'd me on Instagram and said, I know you're a huge C. Wu fan. Do you want this? I was like, uh, yeah. What do you want for it? He's like, dude, I'll just send it to you. No big deal. So I have it right there. Um, that is awesome. Yeah. Do you have any Siwoo Kim stories from your, your own, uh, your own experiences? Uh, so Siwoo takes me to Korean barbecue once a year and I take him to a steakhouse once a year. Um, the Korean culture has come through way better cause I haven't taken him to a steakhouse, but he takes me to a Korean barbecue, uh, every year. He took me to Vegas this year. Um, I do have a story, but obviously it can't be on here, but Okay. <laughs> we've been, we've been, we've had some good times. We, uh, He's gosh, he dude. makes me laugh, man. Cause yeah. I can't tell if he doesn't understand what the hell I'm saying or he wants a dog <laughs> cuss me. Dude, dude, his Instagram, his Instagram follow is so electric. Did you see when he, uh, when he was somewhere and somebody stole his car? His, no. Like, oh, yes. 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 And he, uh, like documented the whole thing trying to get his car back. Yeah. <laughs> Or I thought favorite, it was a joke. Mm-mm. One of my favorite moments was, uh, do you remember a couple years ago at the players when he got in that bunker and so, it was on nine and somebody didn't rake the bunker and his ball ended up in a footprint and he pulled his phone out during a round, a like real round, pulled his phone out, took a picture, posted it on Instagram stories and said, who did this during his round? <laughs> But then, so of, of you know Maddie Lou, you know Maddie Lou, yeah, 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 yeah. Maddie Lou, because uh, she knows we we love Siwoo. Uh, I screenshotted that thing immediately, and I put a, a listener on it to go find out who it was. And we had a listener track shot link that morning and found out that uh, Graham McDowell was in that same bunker like three holes before him. And so uh, we we kind of outed him, and Maddie Lou told me the tour made him take all that down, and he got he got a tongue lashing for getting on his phone and doing that during the round. Yeah, that's what's wrong with him. That's amazing. Nah, dude. Nah, let's just let's pass by for <laughs> disciplining people. All right, here we go. Let's play a quick. I got a couple quick little game shows here. This is just quick. I'm gonna bring up. Uh, I'm gonna ask a couple questions. I'm gonna show you something. You give me your uh, your thoughts first of all. And this is interesting. We've already seen that that you got one of these uh, kind of wrong early. I wanted. I want you to. I want to say how well you know your game, Harold. Best. All right. Your best strokes gained metric. For your PGA Tour career, is it off the tee, approach, around the green, or putting? Your best statistic on the PGA Tour since you came on. Off not the right tee. Now. Off the tee. False. God, it's I was too close. It is close. It's approach to uh, approach right. to green. Yeah. So I drove it really good my first year and then drove it dog crap for two years. But, like, so bad it was, like, 170. I knew it was close. But this year, approach to green has been, like, dude. Yeah. Iron iron bar. What? What? What is it like? I mean, so um, U.S. Open two years ago. Yeah, U.S. Open two years ago um, where I didn't even try to qualify wherever it was. I went and saw Butch um, and it's been it's been great, man. He helped me out a lot. A little bit of confidence, a little bit of, uh, you know, I felt a better understanding of what I what my swing does and. Yeah, it's been night and day. I still see the guy that taught me how to play golf. Like, I'll see Butch, and then every once in a while I'll see Bruce. And most of the time with these guys, I don't – I'll hit balls for like 20 minutes and we'll talk for an hour. So, it's yeah. Yeah. it's just understanding what I do because at the end of the day, man, whether I want to believe it or not, seven years on tour – this is my seventh year on tour. Like, there's just a reality of things that, like, shit doesn't last forever. I don't care how good – like, it yeah. just doesn't. Yeah. Um, so the best thing for me is, you know, they're getting older, figure out what I do so that I can, you know, be able to tell another instructor, Hey, do you see this? Do you, Cause you know, they're not, they're not going to be here forever. 
And, yeah. you know, I want to go as long as I can, as far as I can. Do you do you have swing thoughts when you're playing around? Like, I mean, obviously yeah, well, players have swing thoughts, but do you? When I was growing up, uh, Bruce used to tell me you can only play golf with one swing thought, and that's what I try to do. I try to get one little thing that I've kind of feels good and just – some at some degree once i get on the course i have no swing thought Mm -hmm. because i try to like see just make sure the ball goes where i'm looking Mm -hmm. because once you're starting if you're thinking a lot about your swing you're not thinking about how i'm gonna get the ball to go where i want to go because you've practiced enough to where you just react you you just it becomes second yeah no second all right cool i want the ball to go there all right i'm gonna do this and you do it and i i do it too quick sometimes (laughs) Sometimes I need to sit back and just think and actually process what I'm trying to do. Yeah. All right. Back to the quick game show about how well you know your game. What is your worst, statistically, what is your worst putting surface to roll on? Bermuda, Bent, or POA? Bermuda. It is Bermuda. That is your... Let's go. I knew that. Your best would be Bent, it appears. Not even close. I grew up on Bent. Yeah. It's no brainer. Yep. Yeah. All right uh let's see do you gain more strokes uh, on the field in calm or windy conditions windy condi- oh no oh it's gonna be close gosh oh, i put it up there too early you calm gain, you gain more in calm and moderate you do not you do not do well in the wind statistically harold so when it gets windy i just shoot too bad mm. like it's never like all right manage manageable um yeah because, like, perfect example, TBC this year, I played played great. But, like, I got a good wave. Got a yeah. good wave. And it was, yeah, it was still windy, but I hit some really good drives in the wind, you know, like on 7 and 18. So, there's times, I think, it's when it's windy and the ground is firm. It's like, think about it. Like, it was windy at TBC, but it, the ground was soft. Yeah. So, like. And we'll just keep getting better. I think I'm – yeah. Like, perfect example, it was windy Saturday of Augusta. Like, it's not that I shot 80. It's that I didn't shoot 77. You yeah. know, like, quit trying to shoot 60 fucking three when it's windy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I'm learning. I'm learning. So, I'm still a kid. Uh, still a kid thinking about big decisions. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right, last one about your game. What right. is your – let me – I'm going to read these off. What is your worst – proximity range is it from 75 it's from 100 to 110 no 100 to 125 you're correct it is from around that's 75 yards to 125 both of those ranges your worst proximity range yeah so here's the deal i i don't have a stat guy i don't do stats but uh when i was (laughs) sponsored by cdw Mm-hmm. Uh, so I watch your your little takes, and like if I'm not in the uh, if I'm not in your list, I will like I'll play way more conservatively because <laughs> it gives me like a chance. Like if you know it's not set up for you, like why would you play more aggressive? Like that'd be dumb. Like be Wait, smart about what you're trying. To- run that back. You watch. So what? you will. Ha- so like when you post stuff on Twitter, you'll me? say like, yeah. Like uh-huh. you'll have like um there'll be like a link you can click and it'll have like your who you're picking this week. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. my name's not on there, I will play a little bit more conservatively because like you've ran through all this stuff right here. So like yeah. I will like I won't go and be like, Well, I need to work on this. I'll just play a little bit more conservatively and like see what happens. Stop, dude. You're telling Swear me. Swear to God. It makes huh? I do it all the time. Like if you go, yeah, because everyone that goes on there and looks at stats, they're like like you're looking at everything. You're looking at all this stuff. And I'm like, uh, if my name's on there, it's game on, fire in the hole. Like <laughs> yeah. Dude, I cannot yeah. believe that. You that, that so why that, would I not if I play more aggressive, which I like yeah. to do, yeah, and the odds are against me. Well, like that's just bad news bears well but sometimes it's based on value though you know like sometimes your name is on there or not on there based yeah, that's on- what i'm saying so like if the value is to like like if my name's on there that's when you got to go for it you yeah, got to yeah. fire in the hole so if your name so like it's probably four terms a year so like maybe five and then like if yeah. if my name's not on there i just like because like you know you also put the one sometimes on there like sleepers or like yep Oh, it has a good chance. Sometimes I'll be on there a good bit. So, like, 
if I'm on there, I'll play kind of like I know it's go- the odds are with me. When I'm not on any of them, yeah, it's time to like <laughs> Dude, just chill. This blows my mind. Next yeah, time, just give yourself some shots. Like if I can be really conservative, keep myself in the game, like I'll know when it's time to fire. But when my name's on there, it's like, yeah. all right, fire in the hole. Like play, play aggressive, play the way you play. Yeah. So that just makes sense. Like, why would I not get like why would I play more aggressive when I know statistically all the things you've you know, like you just said are against me? Why would I, I play you, aggressive then? It just blows my mind that you're basing that off of me. <laughs> yeah, because you post that stuff and I like go in there and I'll read it and you'll be like, you'll be like, Well, this guy does this really well, and I'll be like, All right, I understand what I need to do well, but I'd like yeah, I don't do that well. I ain't gonna just do it well like two days from now so like Look, why bro, would next, I time, there? next time i'm just gonna text you i'm just gonna be like all right dude this is what i found i'm about to text you now i'm gonna text you every week you're like here's yeah, where please i, do. I okay. just click on there and i just know i read it and i'm like all right this is all that's, right that's crazy dude. because you don't have to get them all up and down or you don't have to make huh. all the putts it's about doing one better a day like 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 i said you really just need to hit i need to hit one more fairy day which with my iron game it's going to help it it's just compound interest. It's only good with your money, but it's really good with stats. You know, like if I do this well, it's going to – next thing you know, I'm going to hit it closer than I'm not going to have as long putts. You know, yeah, that's just how it works. That's banana land. Okay. <laughs> All right. Obviously, you got the relationship with MJ. Jordan Brand, super cool. We've heard a lot of great stories about the Grove, you know, Grove 23. Yeah. Uh, the speed of the golf carts, the caddies on scooters you know, drones bringing drinks. Although I've heard they stopped that. You can confirm or deny that. Uh, I think they weren't allowed to speak about it, but I just, okay. I just okay. have fun when I go out there. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, is there anything else about that place? Cause it's so it's, I mean, I would just absolutely die to play there. And I'm sure a lot of people would like, is there anything about that place that you feel like yet yeah, people don't know that you, that you could share or like, do you have any idea like what it costs to join? Can anyone pay to join or does MJ kind of have to give his, I'm sure it's he has invite to only his, invite only. Okay. I do know that for sure. You know what the cost is if he invites you? I want to say, I don't, I think I want to say it's 200,000, but it could be more. I think they did it in stages. Um, but it would be, if I lived down there, it'd be worth it to me. Yeah. Um, uh, I really like the hang. Uh, people wouldn't think it, but like, Quail Hollow is a great place to hang out. Yeah. Um, the worst thing you can have at Quail Hollow is a rain delay. <laughs> yeah. It's just, yeah. I love to hang. We're playing there this afternoon. So it's, uh, nice. it's, it's interesting for sure. Um, it's fun. So it, my, I guess, greatest story and everyone's heard is I took my best friend there and basically like MJ just fleeced him and he shit himself. <laughs> it was hilarious. Love that. Yeah, it wasn't that. funny though because he really was shitting himself. Yeah, <laughs> like that. It, it was like watching a train wreck. Yeah, he told him. He said, "We're not gonna have any free rolls out here," and that's when mm. Will just sucked. Mm. Yeah, it was, it was funny. Uh, I'll see him today. I, I mean, it never gets old telling that story. But uh, I I got one other good one. I'll tell you when I'm off here. Okay. And yeah, okay. it's with my wife. You okay. you die laughing. Has has. Would you say like MJ's? Because I mean, it came out recently that you got some advice from MJ. Would you say in general like he's been a little bit of a mentor to you, or do you feel like he's kind of taking you under your under his wing a little bit, or not really? One thousand percent. I've always told him. He said that I said everyone thought the coolest thing about being in the Jordan brand is getting all the shoes. Uh, the coolest, the best thing is being able to bounce stuff off of him. Uh, yeah. You know, we're never going to be in his shoes and he's never going to be in our shoes. And he'll tell you that and he'll be like, hey, this is what I would do. Let me see if these guys have this information. Like he's really good at researching and trying to give you the best option. He, you know, he, we just talk about he's like he's like an older brother. He's like, just make sure like that I'm taken care of. And that love and appreciation that he gives me is what I want to give to other people. You know, like it's pretty cool. It's from the one of the best athletes in, to ever yeah step foot on earth that makes it really cool but like that's what we should be doing in general with just ordinary people just taking care of people if you can um yeah he's giving me great advice uh the article was terrible because i had tonsillitis and i the guy was like i heard you got advice and i was like oh yeah he said no like i could barely talk um Mm -hmm. so they it was way more detailed mj is very uh 
he's very thoughtful. Like he, you know, he just doesn't just say, like he's really good at putting himself in your shoes, which I think is really hard if you're in his shoes. Like if you were him, yeah. I'd be like, yeah, this is what I would do, you know? And like, yeah. you could easily sit there and be like, he's the best player ever. Like he doesn't know, he doesn't get it, but that's not him, man. And uh, he's definitely helped me out. We talk a lot of shit more than anything. So that makes it pretty fun. So along those lines, like what, I just want to, I don't want to talk all the, the bullshit, but just a few. I'm fired up, man. When I'm here long enough, I got about 10 minutes. You can fire it up. Ask I whatever. Just, I just want to say, like, what has to happen to the game of professional golf between, I don't care what league it is, PGA, DP, Live, for the players, the leagues and organizations themselves, and the golf fans to feel like everybody won? What does that look like? Because right now, obviously, it feels like not everybody's winning. And, and honestly, you know, I think the ones that are going to pay the greatest price are pro- probably the fans if we have 1, such a fragmented experience. So what do you think has to happen for that to, for that to There's not so work? many moving parts. Um, I, yeah. Like, for instance, like let's take the majors out and let's talk about it in that form. Like the PJ Tour has been absolutely insanely great to me. You know, like I, in a million years, I couldn't imagine playing golf. Yeah. And like being able to do support my lifestyle that I live. Um, so it's just funny though that the PJ Tour has made all this money off of competition. And now there's competition and they like it's like free for all, it's a panic. Um yeah. I just I just don't get it. But the best thing you can do right now is everyone needs to get on the phone, like, and there just needs to be communication amongst everybody about what they want to do, how they want to do it, where they want to do it. And to be honest with you, they just, most, of, I think if Liv wanted to burn the PGA tour, they could have already. No one sued. Like I find it pretty odd that like no one hasn't sued to try to, or got an injunction to try to play the playoffs this year. Um, it's just, it's sad because people I admire from the tour haven't like, like all they say is it's ran by the membership. Well, the membership, all the whole membership should have a say. And, you know, I've been very lucky to make a 90 foot putt and be offered some awesome things. And just, I hold, like, I hold like what I want to do as the most important thing. And, um, I want to, I want both of them to be able to work. So when we talk about it, like I hate that, like, just because you think that you, someone should either go to live or shouldn't go to live is what you think of that person. That's like, that's wrong. Like, and one thing I've learned with my foundation, it costs a lot of money to help people. And I know everyone jokes about them growing the game, but like you can really help a lot of people with more money. I just don't, I don't think people understand. Like when you started this mentorship, there's 50 mentees, 50 mentors. I mean, it is 90, it's going to be $90,000. Like, but it helps these kids. These kids love it. I was, I was with them yesterday and it was so much fun. So like, let's like, let's quit beating around the bush and like, just be honest with ourselves and just, just like understand that like, not everyone's rich. Like not everyone's in a great position. And like, if you like put yourself in, in some of the player shoes, like, man, I don't have much left in my career. Like my goal is to make as much money as I can, as long as I can, so that I can go do whatever I want to do when I want to do it. And I just, I think that you just got to get on the phone. You got to make this work. You got to, I don't think it's gone down as well. And I just think that if as a man, the best thing a man can do is when he's wrong, admit it, fix it. Like no one's perfect. Yeah. And that's not happening. So speaking of the foundation, I wanted to bring up the HV3 foundation. Um, we, uh, what, what is, what is it like, what is it you guys need? Obviously money, right? And what's an initiative yeah. you can get behind? I, I want to give you a chance to, to say that. Yeah, for sure. So um, basically we have the youth on course in North and South Carolina. That's our deal for golf. That's kind of how I grew up. I'm not sure everyone's heard the story. I played golf from June 1st until September 1st, Monday through Friday for a hundred bucks. It was awesome. Yep. So youth on course, it's $5 for every kid under the age of 18. I think North and South Carolina, they have 70, 78 courses and we sponsored 45 percent of it or so um oh yeah look at you go baby 
we so we do that and then we have a big gal event which you see right there and then the drivers for change which is with bubba wallace and wyndham and it's you know great initiative for those guys to help us out um they're fun adult events the gala and all those uh we have an event where we raise money for the men's and women's golf team at east carolina the daniel meggs jr no, I don't even know if anyone remembered Daniel, but Daniel got the Wake Forest scholarship at Wake Forest, passed away when he was 20, mm. 28. Um, mm. And I just – special for me because, like, before he passed away, like, got to do some really cool stuff. Tiger did something unbelievable for him, and it's been awesome. We're trying to get an AJGA event in Charlotte. I never played any AJGA growing up. Just it was too expensive. But, like, I think a kid like me, if I would have gotten to an AJJ event, you would have gotten more exposure. So, you know, I'd, anything I can do to get a kid like myself a chance to, like, you know, do yeah. something he wouldn't be able to do otherwise, I'm in. Um, and then we started this mentorship. I got asked after George Floyd's uh, death, what was the most important thing that ever happened to you and right now? And I said, to be honest with you, like, take the kid and the wife away. Um I had these two older gentlemen that basically that weren't my parents that basically cared about me. Like literally they would take me to lunch and they would just be like, what's going on? And to this day, they still do. I'm going to see them next week at the mountains. So we started this mentorship program and it's been, that's awesome. It has been the coolest freaking thing. I've, I've like, I always thought I'd be about golf and it's awesome that it's not about golf. Yeah. Um, so it's been it's been great. It costs money, and I'm going to raise it. I think we if we can get ten million dollars before I leave this earth, it'll run itself for a very long time, and that's that's my goal. Well, you're doing a lot of good stuff. It's a very active foundation for, um, you know, when you look at other foundations that you know athletes and PGA Tour players are doing. You guys do a lot, so you're doing it you're doing it right. And uh, we made a small donation this morning just for you coming on the show. It's not it's not much, but we did what we can, and I think others should uh, should go check it out and go donate. I appreciate it. Everything counts, man. Uh, that's just where it's all hands on deck. Let's go. Yep. So all right. thank you. Before we get you out of here, let's play a quick. Uh, I love, love it. Quick game here. This is gonna be fun. I think I've never <laughs> done this actually with anyone on the show. So that you're. That's kind of scary though. That you're taking a lot of risks there. You know what? <clears throat> I'm trying, man. We're trying to elevate the game. I want to start with a little rip my drip, rip my drip, the Open Championship edition. I'm gonna show you some pictures of some guys mm. at the Open. Give me your thoughts on the outfits, right? Because we saw some, we saw some. Just one to ten, right? Well, no, just just give me your thoughts overall. Like you can, you can rip. Oh, them. got it, got it, got it, got it. Most of them, you can say I'm down with it. Whatever. All right, here's. All the right. Uh, I'm down with it. I have skinny calves, so like everyone was <laughs> shitting on them, but like I can get down with it. You know, I've always been down with the hoodie gang, so like I'm I'm all in. Love it. All right. I'm down with them too. Now Pat was freaking out. Pat was like, "These look like pajama pants," and they got the sweater, the sweater cuffs at the bottom. I love the joggers. Grayson makes great joggers. I totally agree with both of y'all, but like for me personally, I yeah. can get down with that. I lost six pounds overseas, so it'll look good on me right there we now. Go. <laughs> we just got back from a Scotland trip. I did not lose six pounds. I can tell you that. All right, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's do the next one. John, uh, booby bridges. This- yeah that's uh, that is what they call it. um i think it's terrible but like it's totally him so it's like not. i judge people based off of when they wear stuff you're like man that flows with their personality like yeah. all right man i would never wear that but like i would definitely go to hooters like i've been to hooters numerous times like <laughs> yeah. so i you know i'm just not here to judge and i think he rocked him really well and i'm sure they're paying off like if they were paying me what he they're paying him, I would have to you think wear, about it. <laughs> you wear like a full Hooters like onesie out there if you had to with a collar. <laughs> oh, that'd be freaking awesome. All right, next one. I, well, Rory. I'm a, you know I wear some Nike stuff sometimes, even though I'm a Jordan guy. I mean that's fire, dude. This I, the fire. only problem is the this khaki. Is not, you're the crazy. Khaki oh, the khaki. You're talking about the color. I'm colorblind, man. My wife dresses. Oh, are you? Leave. Well, I think I am, man. I get some blues, and they look, they'll be green, and the man will be like, what the hell are you wearing? So, like, let's take the color away. That is so comfortable for how cold it is right there. To me, it's like when I, when I saw it, I'm like, if I saw this on, at Augusta against all the green and stuff, but like when you saw this on the brown grass and the fescue with that ugly-ass tailor-made bag, 
I was like, dude, this, what is he Hey, to he was trying to camouflage to the he top of the leaderboard. All right, <clears throat> here's this one. Now this. Oh, he went nuts. See, we this, don't know what the hell he's wearing. But dude, they're paying him a lot of money. <laughs> this broke me. I'm like, wait a minute. There's PGA Tour branded. I mean, it says it on the thing. You can't really read it. But on his. No on comment. His desk, I've yes. seen it. It is. It's nuts. I don't I've ask questions anymore. This. I just stay to myself. I keep my mouth shut. I do like every tweet on Twitter that's associated with live. Like people will be like, Harold, I'm so happy you didn't go to live. I like that one. Everyone's like, just go ahead and go to live. I like that one. <laughs> just all of them. That I way. stir the pot as much as I can because I'm going to do what's best for me. But, but my guy, his what? celebration, second to none. Like, yeah. I know it. I know exactly what he said. <laughs> it wasn't. You do. <laughs> What he say? No, I'm assuming. I'm assuming he's uh, like, "Oh, fuck this all." <laughs> is that what he says? Is that he I'm says? sure he gets so pissed, man. I know. I love yeah. it. But dude, this this sweatshirt. First of all, it's like, what? Okay, I can't even believe they make those. And also, uh, why is the first time I'm even ever seeing this? And I watch a lot of golf. Why is the first time I'm ever seeing it? Is it on Siwoo? Is he the only one they could get to pull to wear this? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't even understand. <laughs> the only, um, that's funny. Um, it looks like he's got letters on there, but I don't know what the letters. You see, like it looks like there's the a G. PGA Tour. Oh, it. Oh, the big letters. The big letters are PGA Tour all over it. Dude, in Korea, they probably think it's hot. You gotta respect the hustle. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if he'll give that to me when we talk to him next. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you pictures, and you're just gonna name that tour pro. Okay. Just Ooh. Who it is. Okay. Can I do it? We'll see. Here's the first one. This is obviously a childhood photo. Name <laughs> Dude, photo. no freaking clue. Really? I if I had to guess, Henrik Stinson. No. Yeah, like I got no clue. That is, Who is uh, it? That is Patrick Reed as a young boy. God, he looks like the devil right there. I know. <laughs> that is, the look is Fucking brutal. It. I should know. He was talking smack because, you know, there's so many double greens yeah. last week, and we had some great conversations while – we were taking forever. <laughs> yes. That must be that uh, all right. Next one. Harris English. Yes. That was that uh, terrible tour tour drawing they did for like the tour championship. Or oh my gosh. He oh God. Like, I got to remember. Yeah. I was like, was like Lane Kiffin in this, in this photo, but Lane yeah. Kiffin. Well, he to came me, out was firing the other day about the NIL. Holy cow. Oh, I didn't see that. This was the worst player on the whole board. I'm like that. I know it's Harris English, but if, with the Callaway visor you do, yeah, that helps out a lot. He's got yeah. some flow too. I'm jealous. I'm bald. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's another one. Now this this could be a this is a okay. I should have said this tour player or caddy. Do you know who that How is? Right Gino now? is it? <laughs> Nailed it. That's so messed up. That's not. <laughs> No, it's not him. That's that's from the movie Powder. You remember that movie? I've never seen Powder. I came out. You're probably too young. I'm 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 almost too young for it, and I'm older than you. Our oh boy Gino. Oh my gosh, that is so. I love Gino, but that He's just made best. you're gonna send this clip to him, you asshole, for sure. <laughs> oh, for sure. All right, I got two more, and then we're out of here. Oh, I saw this the other day, Scotty Scheffler. I Bro. didn't know, but but when it was just Sam and I was like. Is the guy next that to looks nothing like Scotty Scheffler to me. Look, I at can't the, tell if Scotty doesn't have hair. It has hair. I know it, it just it looks like I, I this bad picture has blown my mind since I saw it. Man, he's playing. I mean, I can't wait to see the Player of the Year. Yeah, well, that's, I hey. think I wish both of them were American so that you could you so like it'd be a closer. Yeah, bit. like if if it was roles reversed. It would be a different toll. Like I just, it's just the facts of it. It kind of sucks, but it's yeah, it's what it is. <laughs> next, next few weeks are gonna tell a lot. All right, and the last one should be an easy one. I mean, I guess just the guy on the bottom. Oh shit! God, <laughs> we talked about it last time, but it's just an old. It's just a classic. It's just a classic. I did see my boy at uh, PGA. He did my group. I uh, man, I miss him. I, I I just hope he just gives it one <clears throat> one solid try. You know, just like. All gas, no brakes. Yeah. Like, you you know, and yeah, that's a funny picture, though. Yeah. Awesome, dude. Uh, HV3, you've been the best. 
It's great to talk to you. Great to catch up with you. Let's not make it four years between the next one. And, Perfect. Uh, thanks, thanks for coming on, bro. We'll stay in touch. I got to roll. I got to call. I love you. Talk to you soon. See you, buddy.